This is a fantastic initiative by the ICT Life Sciences Forum uh, to initiate this lecture and Graham is an obvious person to give this first lecture. The lecture celebrates uh, the developments uh, that have taken place in the bionic year uh, where uh, Graham's ability to bring medical sciences and the physical sciences such as information technology together uh, has enabled this fantastic device uh, to be produced. The success of the program uh, is clearly evident uh, in the number of people who have benefited from his uh, development of a bionic ear. These developments uh, will be the future uh, and I applaud this initiative by the Life Sciences Forum to initiate the Graham Clark oration. To me, many developments will take place where the physical sciences interface with the biological sciences in the future development uh, of a variety of devices uh, and experimental activities uh, in the uh, medical area. It's a pleasure to be able to support this initiative. Thank you very much. Since I started my research 40 years ago to electrically stimulate the brain to restore hearing in severely to profoundly deaf people, there have been major advances in all areas of science and a great need to develop partnerships. The research has led to the multi-channel cochlear implant or bionic ear becoming the first successful interface between the world of sound and human consciousness. The multi-channel cochlear implant also became the first major advance in helping deaf children develop spoken language. Cochlear have done a magnificent job in developing the research industrially and it has been an exciting partnership between research and industry. This is a small section of the intricate network of nerve fibers that transmit electrical signals from the hair cells to the auditory pathways. That cochlear neural network is shown here in the eye of a needle drawn to scale to give you an idea of the dimensions and problems we faced. In 1974, I set out in partnership with David Dewhurst and Ian Forster from the Department of Electrical Engineering at the University of Melbourne and Jim Patrick from Otolaryngology to develop the most complex package of electronics yet implanted in a patient. The electronics were realized as silicon chips that were bonded to gold-plated tracks on silica wafers. The electronics were sealed in a container used to send devices to the moon. It had two aerials for receiving data to control the stimuli and power to operate it. The electronics were connected to an electrode bundle for insertion around the basal turn of the cochlea to stimulate the nerve fibers. I am my end. 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 In the end. Put the coil back on. Put the coil back on. <clears throat> can you hear me now? Uh, can you hear me now? Is it loud enough? Good. In the end. In the end. George Watson was my next patient who's been deaf now for 13 to 17 years. Victorian medical officers We'll strike from Sunday. We'll strike on Sunday. Unless the Victorian Hospitals Association. The Victorian uh, Hospital Association. Withdraws a plan to cut doctors' wages. Withdraws a plan to cut doctors' wages. So nothing has changed. <laughs> we
we had to work closely with Cochlear Limited, who developed a electrode system suitable for using in children and the magnets used to get them in place. Brian Pyman, Rob Webb and I operated on the first two young children, Scott, 10, Bryn, 5, in 1985 and 1986. Go to the office. You tell me, tell me what you think I said. Now, with early operation, training and listening skills, children can develop normal spoken language. So with improved speech processing, early diagnosis and intervention, and auditory verbal education, the children are achieving remarkable speech. I feel like... So this is what real life sounds like. The speech will need to be analysed in a very uh, more sophisticated way to take advantage of the additional nerves. And I'd like to just show you a simulation of what the bionic ear may be like in the future. Ed. Note food. the correspondence Pod. between the speech Heat. frequencies and the electrodes being stimulated in this animation. Head, hood, hod, hid. Head, hood, hod, hid. Head, hood, Hod, hid. There are many applications of these new directions, which I like to refer to as an area of medical bionics. Um, you see a list of some of the important developments, likely nerve and spinal cord repair, drug-resistant epilepsy, bionic eyes, infection control, and so on. We have exciting future. I'd like to be starting all again. Thank you. Today there are more than 100,000 people in 55 countries worldwide fitted with cochlear implants, including me. I was born in 1989. I was the pride, the joy of my parents. They had great dreams and aspirations for me. That is, until one day when I was 18 months old, they found out that I was profoundly deaf. Their dreams were utterly shattered. My mother had to sacrifice her successful dancing career to help me. I had my first implant when I was four, and by the time I was nine, my speech perception and my hearing skills was of a 2.9 year old child. I would be lying to you if I was to tell you that my subsequent journey was all easy and smooth. The truth is, it was a huge struggle for me, for my parents, and for everyone around me. But through hard work and the help of the second implant, my language skills and my speech perception gradually improved and I slowly caught up with my schooling and started to excel. I have always loved dancing, partly because both of my parents were good, very good professional ballet dancers. Uh, so this led me to study year 12 dance. In spite of many difficulties, including my naughty implants flying off every time when I did a pirouette during my dance exam, uh, I successfully completed the subject with the fourth highest mark in Victoria, and I received the Victorian Premier's Award for Dance. Today, I am bilingual in both English and Chinese. My next goals are to be able to speak fluently in Spanish and master sign language. 
I hope to do them in this very university uh, in conjunction with majoring architecture. It is my ambition to live a full life and make positive contributions to the world, just like what Professor Graham Clark has done. It is with my deepest heartfelt gratitude and admiration for Professor Clark that I share with you today some of my personal experiences with my bionic ears. This, in, uh, this invention has given pe deaf people worldwide a priceless gift, the ability to hear. I am sure this gift will continue to change the lives of people all over the world because it sure has changed mine. Without my bionic ears, I wouldn't be I would never be where I am today. Now, on the behalf of ICT for Life Science Forum, I would like to give this memento to Professor Clark in gratitude for his passion, dedication, and important contributions in, one, in making one of the most successful medical inventions of our time. Professor Graham Clark, <laughs> thank you. With the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.